I'm gonna bring y'all back on in just a second. Okay. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. I hope you guys are doing great. This is your girl, Angela Thomas Smith. I am, of course, you know, I am the founder of AALAC, which is the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign, bringing awareness to African American authors and literacy around the world. I am also the founder of Aspiring Authors Magazine, where we are bridging the gap between brown authors all over the world and touching on topics that's affecting the brown community. I am super excited about today. This morning, I woke up with the urge to reach out to my poets and to feature my poets. So we are having this pop-up virtual poet showcase. And I have four amazing poets that's going to be sharing some of their poetry with you guys today. So I want you to share this because I am going to need you guys to cast your votes and vote for them because they're gonna, the winner will be featured inside of Aspiring Authors Magazine for the month of July. You know, our magazine released the 25th through the 31st. So we still have time to get them in. So if you have time, please share this, share this, share this. We're gonna be bringing up each poet. They're gonna have an opportunity to share. We have Jerry Petito with us today, and I'm gonna allow them to come on and share who they are, just briefly. Hold on, let me. My mouse wanna act crazy when I get on live. I don't know why it do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here they are, here they are. So we have Jerry Petito. Hey, sweetie. Hey, sweetie. We have Mika. Miko, hey. <laughs> and we have Kalia. Hey, hey. <laughs> so we're going to start with Jerry, and she's going to have the floor. So, Jerry, it's on you. Okay, sweetheart. So, oh, let um, me put you, hold on, hold on. Let me put you up by yourself. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Petito. Uh, I'm a radio show host on the Jerry Petito show. I'm an author of I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. I'd rather be a smart ass than a dumb ass. Um, so I'm going to read a poem to you today. And uh, I owe everything to God. Okay. So here goes. So many religions have surfaced today. Most of us wonder which one's the right way. You won't find them in there because God said it clear. You won't work your way into heaven, my dear. Most big religions have put God away. They want your alliance and want you to pay. With Jesus nailed upon that cross before his last breath he took, his words were spoken for us to hear. It is finished, and he left us his book. My works are just worthless. I'd end up in hell. That's why he sent Jesus. Now in heaven I'll dwell. I'm not ashamed to proclaim his name. I'm not ashamed. It's God I claim. The world stirs hate, but God stirs love. The world's lost faith. It's found up above. The world says God's a myth. The world says God is fake. God says I'm really here. God says I'm no mistake. The lost are broken. The broken are lost. Condemning your soul, not sparing the cost. God says, listen, I'm here for you. Just come to me. I'll make you new. You laugh at him and curse his name. You dance with evil in this war game. When Jesus said, it is finished, they took him off that cross. He rose from the dead so your soul wasn't lost. He no longer dangles on the cross from that day. He's free from that cross. Jesus now made the way. We wear a cross because we're his kid to be reminded what this man did. Come as you are and don't pretend. He knows all things beginning to end. I cried out one night, whoever's out there, please show me the truth. Does anyone care? It was then that I heard him as clear as can be. I'm here and I care. I made you for me. You are not alone. I will lead the way. I'll never leave you. Your price I did pay. I'll protect you and guide you as long as you want. Tell me your sorrows. I'm your confidant. I'm your heavenly father. You're, earth, you're my earthly kid. There was a price on you to the highest of bid. It was then that I marked you and said you were mine. I knew at that moment you were made to shine. I'll never put rules on the way you should live. I give you free will from my life I did give. You have the choice. The choice is yours. There are two choices behind each doors. One choice is distant and it will bring pain. One choice is closer and it will bring gain. 
The cross I was nailed to, I was nailed to for you, not in religion's name. It was you that I knew. Self-righteous will pay. Trust me on this. If they ever judge you, them I'll dismiss. Everyone sins. That's why I came. No one is better than you in my name. Self-righteous will perish. I won't call them home. Stay humbled and loyal in heaven you'll roam. I can't come to you till you let me in. I'll open my arms and I'll cleanse your sin. Father God, I do thank you for sending your son to shed his blood for me. Then he said it was done. When Jesus took up the cross, he died on it for you. And you now need to accept him so he can make you new. Ask him to take over because you are way too weak. I promise strength he'll give you. If only Jesus you seek. It is finished were his last words. His flock will now be saved marching in herds. It is finished. I know he said, now you can live and not be dead. Ask Jesus to free you of bondage, Satan holds. Ask Jesus to stand guard as the Bible now unfolds. All that was written is being played out. Will you be ready or will you have doubt? Will you be ready the day he returns or left behind to feel the burns? My prayer is this, that you take heed to know the reason Jesus did bleed. The time is near. It really is. Will you be ready to say you're his? That's for everybody. God bless all of you. Amen. Amen. I enjoyed that poem. Thank you. So I hope someone is encouraged by that poem on today. That was amazing. That is amazing. Some people need to hear that because everybody's not going to church and everybody's not picking up a Bible. So I thank you for sharing that poem with us thank on you. today. Thank, thank you. And we're going to be bringing up Miss Miko next. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'll be reading the first poem from out of my book, Brain Food. It can be found on eagerlifepublications.net. And the first poem is called Fear. And it says, Impending thoughts of distress. We all have this emotion aroused when we feel there's a threat. Whether real or imagined, being afraid is just another part of life. The strife is when you let it overcome, when we let it overcome us, subdue us, become sealed and stifled smothered in the mind, but we should choose now to suppress the what if. Release the fear of suffocation. Oh, I'm sorry. Release the fear suffocated by the atmosphere. Free yourself and live. Embrace your fear. Accept it. Deal with it. Face it immediately, then abolish it. There is no shortcut. No way around it. Even when you cry, take a deep breath and allow it to happen because these experiences will help you prevail. Dwell in life and do what's right. Our fears are just like important business deals. Face it boldly, bravely, and with confidence. You'll get what you need. Pray and be poised. Be strong. Confront it and don't hang on to it. Fear is just an illusion, although it can also be very real. Then I pose questions in my book. I don't know if you guys could see that. And, you know, it's asking, how do you currently overcome your fear? Smile right now and explain your strengths of how you dominate it. Even if you haven't quite figured it out yet, what's your plans for getting past the fears in the future? It's a distressing emotion arised by impending danger, evil, pain, etc. What is your security from this? How do you keep calm? Where does your courage come from? Use the space on the next page to explain the specific incidents where you have overcame fear and the tendency to overwhelm it. How did you dominate it? And it gives you a place to where you can pin your thoughts. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's fear. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for that poem. Um, fear. Yeah. Fear is definitely something that God did not give us the spirit of fear. So no, fear is something that we should not be walking in. So I thank you for sharing that. Someone today that's listening may have needed that. So yeah. I thank you for sharing that. The I next know. one up will be Miss Kalia. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Kalia Prayer, aka KP Squared. And um, I'm the author of two children's books. The first one is um, Love Beyond the Bars. It's about a child's relationship with her father that's incarcerated. 
And I wanted to inspire people that um, experience parents that are incarcerated. So make sure you check out this book on Amazon. And also, I'm the new author of the coloring book. It's inspiring to many, not just um, students or children that have a loved one that's incarcerated. All right, so today's poem, I'm going to share with you. It's called I Am Black Inside. And I wrote this to inspire individuals, every individual, to love the skin that they're in, especially um, black skin. We are beautiful, and no one can take that away from us, no matter what happens. Here we go. In a pitch dark room, I suggest you keep your lights bright. Because if you don't, you won't see a trace of me. See, I am black, dark, dark ultra black on the inside of me. You may see my eyes, you may even see my teeth, but I guarantee you won't see the real me. See, I am black, dark, dark, super black on the inside of me. I had to struggle to make it, to be successful, and for people to accept me. Many years have passed since slavery, and it seems some of my people are still not completely free. I have a strong mind and a heart inside of my body, and I'm built wonderfully, but not as wonderful as the black inside of me because I am black, dark, dark, mega black on the inside of me. God created me with this black skin after my ancestors struggle outside in the sun, beaten and tortured, killed. The color of my skin is a symbol of when the white folks finally let my people in. After all that blood, sweat and tears. Now we're finally good enough for your central AC. But that still doesn't change the black inside of me because I am black, dark, dark, tremendously black on the inside of me. No matter how much makeup I put on, what outfit, or how my black hair is fixed. Some of y'all look at me and say, that girl must be mixed. And you're right. I'm mixed with black and even darker than that. Because I am black, dark, dark, super black. See, I am black, dark, dark, ultra black. I am black, physically, mentally, emotionally black on the inside of me. And do you know what? Black is beautiful. I thank you for that. Does everyone need to know that they are loved and they need to know that regardless of the skin that you are in, that you are valuable and that you are someone to um, <clears throat> to have value. Um, you know, people have to learn how to love the skin that they're in and accept who they are. Um, and we have to remember that we're all children of, of the most high. So that's the most important thing. I'm going to bring everybody else back in. Because I do want to take this, I always like to take this opportunity to, when I'm before my platform, I always like to take the opportunity to share and for people to really get to know who you are. So um, I know, I personally know Jerry. I don't personally know her, but we um, have a connection. Um, yes. Me and Jerry are hosts on the same network. Um, she's also a radio host. Um, so we're on the same network and I want her to share with the listeners um, and those that are watching um, just a little bit about herself um, and her show. OK, so God is so good. Um, I'll, I'll briefly just give you guys a little insight. Twenty nine years ago, I was a dumbass. <laughs> Twenty nine years later today, I can I can say I'm a smart ass and it's through God because I was a drug addict, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So all that stuff. And about four and a half years ago, I got woken up and God said, write your book. And I laughed and said, okay, I'm a nutritional health coach. And now I'm also a recovery coach. And I'm, a, uh, I have different certifications in health and fasting. And I cured myself of two cancers almost 25 years ago through nutrition and all that. Having said that, I wrote the book <clears throat> and when it came out, I was approached by Hamilton radio. And they said, how would you like to have an interview with the owner's daughter, DJ Danny? And I said, of course. So they interviewed me about my book and then asked me if I'd like to be a host. And I prayed about it and I said no at first. And God said, yes. So that started 
my radio career, Angela. And I said yes to that. And now here's what's really cool. Vince Scott from Freedom Truth Radio, young black man, he was a host on Hamilton Radio and we teamed up a couple times. We absolutely love each other. And we did some shows together. Brother O, DJ Olasky, that's his cousin. And wow. Brother O was watching his cousin's show with me on it. And about a month later reached out to me and I'm going to tell you what he said. And this was so cool for me. And I'm going to share something with you ladies. My daughter-in-law is black and my granddaughter is part black. So I have black in my family, so I don't see color. So brother O calls me up and he says, Jerry, through messenger. And he said, Jerry, I watched you on Vince's show, blah, 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 blah. I need you to come along. And at this point you will be my only Caucasian host. Well, you know, I jumped on that. I was like, I'm in, okay, I'm in. So that's what started me on O&E. And the rest has been history. I now am on five networks. I'm now the 2019 Internet International Hall of Fame for radio show host. I, through this pandemic, I revised my book and it was just published two weeks ago. And I added, you know, like almost 200 pages to the book now. God is so good. And I say that all to say this, nothing's impossible. I will be 60 years old. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter. Follow your dreams, guys. I don't care if you're a drug addict now and you're 40. Think about what I just said. I got clean and sober 29 years ago, but I didn't really start this journey until I was in my 50s. Think about that. Nothing's impossible. You don't have to die. Okay, give it to God. I just had to say that. Amen. Amen. How to say that. So Miss Miko, can you um share with the followers um and those that are watching and listening um just a little bit about yourself? Yes, okay. Well, um, I'm an author and I'm also a publisher. Uh, like I said, yes, I wrote Brain Food and I have a couple of more books that you guys could uh get, but um, I started my journey uh, because of my background as well. Um, I wasn't on drugs, but I did get shot and I did have a really tough marriage and it was hard to get out of it. So I had to find myself because, you know, like I, I like right now, I do um, a whole lot of speaking in terms of trying to help women get over domestic violence and to find themselves so that you can excel in whatever you want to do. Because there's so many women that, women that want to write a book, they want to start a clothing line. They want to do so many things, but if you are in a marriage that or a abusive relationship or just family issues, just certain things that's clogging you, it's kind of hard to bust out of that. So anyway, God has blessed me to get out of that and to start a publishing company. Um, and I recently signed my first uh, author too, to Eagle Life Publications. So I'm excited about that. Um, and I'm just here to help women. And uh, I wrote the poem that we just read. I wrote that uh, as far as fear, because I had a hard time with fear, because when it's time to bust away and get free, it's like, OK, now what am I going to do? I'm a single mom. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. So I'm here to encourage people. Like she said, um, God is real. He can help you. You stay prayerful, stay believing and never stop doing what you have to do. And if you want to write a book, I always you can visit me. Look me up. Um, I, I, uh, I can help you guys with that. So, and I've written some children's books as well. So you guys will be able to do that. So, I mean, basically that's my story. I'm a single mom. I, I, I struggle, but I also uh, have a whole lot of strength and I have a whole lot of support and I appreciate anyone who's been supporting me and I appreciate the future support that will come. And I'm here to help any and everybody who has a story because we all can tell our story in our own unique ways. So again, out of all of these books, <laughs> If y'all need something to read, hit me up. If you want to write something, hit me up. I'm your girl, and I hope that you all are blessed and highly favored. Amen, amen. amen. You know what? I, I I didn't know anything about um you guys um <clears throat> before this event, but yeah. when I tell you, <laughs> we have so much in common. Yeah, I am a survivor of domestic violence, six years shot point blank range with a shotgun. Um, God is good. I ain't even, see that's the story. Ain't, and cannot deny that God is good. And um, I thank him for the platform and yes. being able mm -hmm. to allow me to share people's stories, yeah. um, their mm -hmm. testimonies, because yeah. other people overcome by hearing other people's testimony. And yeah, again, right. like I stated, everybody's not going to church. Everybody's not picking up the Bible and 
the only Jesus that some people are going to get is by tuning in to some of these um, broadcasts, mm -hmm. some of these lives, and, yes. and some of these things that we're doing. So I constantly try to keep Jesus before my platform so that people can see it. So Girl, people can see yeah. It. That's yes. just, just how I am. So it's just, you know, I don't believe in coincidence. So I, I truly believe that this was divine connection, you know, yes. because this morning, this was just a, a, a spur of the moment thing. You yes. know, he just made me this this morning. And <laughs> I said, let me get up and do something. I hadn't been live all week on Facebook. You got me up. <laughs> Look at God. Yes. Look at God. You know what he's doing? So, yes. So I definitely, I, I definitely, I and, definitely, and after this, I, I want to connect with you. But I want to give um, Kalia a chance to um, tell a little bit about herself. All right. I'm Kalia S. Prayer. KP Square is what they call me. I am happy to be amongst this greatness today. Um, all of you ladies are beautiful and talented <laughs> as well. Um, I am a actress. I am a wife, a twin mommy, and an author, of course. Um, like I said, I wrote a book recently called Love Beyond the Bars. That was my first children's book. I have one that I'm working on now. And that book is about a young girl and her love for her father that transcend and uh, move beyond the bars of the prison. Yes, the bars are metaphors. We all have different bars in our life. I am also the founder of a theater company. I am a theater teacher by trade, and I'm, a, I'm the founder of a nonprofit theater company called KP Squared Theater, and our mission is to provide culturally relevant theater to children and youth. Man, that is amazing. Hey. Um, can can y'all say where y'all from, Jerry? I know you're from New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey originally. Originally born and raised Long Island City, New York, Queens. I'm a New York girl, baby. I'll always be a New York girl. But I'm from hey. Robbinsville, New Jersey. I always joke with her because she yeah. she has this little thing. She's the Jersey who. The Jersey Jewel, I was named. <laughs> oh, I love her yes, sense of humor. I love her. <laughs> yes, you are. And Miss Miko, where are you from? Well, I'm I'm living in Dallas, Texas right now, but I'm from Tennessee. Well, and St. Louis. Like I was born and raised in Tennessee, um, but I moved to St. Louis, so I've spent a whole lot of my life in St. Louis. But right now, I'm in Dallas with the Cowboys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, Miss yeah. Leah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm very, very proud about where I'm from. So I'm gonna give you details. Um, most time we would say we're from Miami, but I lived in Miami. I am from South Florida, and I am from a small city called Hollandale, Florida. Now Hollandale Beach, Florida, and it's between Miami and Fort Lauderdale. So, South is Florida. that near Hollywood, Florida? Ha yes, it's near is Hollywood. Hollywood? <laughs> okay. Now I have a finger. I played basketball in college, and one of my teammates, she was from Hollywood, Florida. Ah, yes. Florida, her her daughter actually played for um I think um F um Florida State or one of them. She's the coach now. She's the Sanders. She goes oh, to last wow. She's a coach oh, down there at um, the college she attended. I think it was Fam U, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Can I tell you something? I want to thank you guys for coming basketball. on today. Huh? Real, real quick about basketball. Uh -huh. my, my grandson is, is 19, a white boy, but he was this little white boy. My daughter took him to Florida and they went to LeBron James' home, rang the doorbell. The grandmother was babysitting and let them in. And we have the video of my grandson at 12 years old in LeBron's house on his court playing with his kids. Hey. <laughs> hey. Wow. wow. Yeah. How cool. How That's cool. How up. cool. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for um, taking some time out your day to come on. I want to ask all of the, the those that are listening and watching to please um, cast your votes. Um, under this, please let me know which poem you like. If you need to go back and listen again, please go back and replay. Um, please share the video so that we can um, get as much exposure as possible um, because these amazing women have some amazing poems and I am super duper excited to be connected to you guys. Um, I would love to connect with you guys after this. Um, inbox me. Um, so I'm gonna post um, links where you can get in contact with them to purchase their books um, after this. So if y'all would inbox me your links um, for your books and things, I will post them so that they can um, get them. 
But okay. thanks for the invite, Angela. I appreciate Love it. You, guys. you are welcome. Thank you are welcome. You. I Beautiful. hope y'all have a wonderful, uh, wonderful rest of y'all day. Yes. And if y'all celebrate the holiday, um, be safe. Um, practice <laughs> social distancing. And Jump please in. make sure you're wearing your Wait, mask. Jump because jump this <laughs> coronavirus is no joke. Some people are not taking it serious. Yeah. And, um, here in South Carolina, the cases are going up. I mean, yeah, it is it's, it's 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 terrible. It, it's so going true. up. You thought it was going down, but it's going up. But the beaches are wide open, and yeah. I'm just praying for these people. Oh lord, uh, that they oh, practice man. social distancing and wear their masks. So y'all be safe. And again, thank I you, thank you guys so much for um coming on. Y'all have thank a great day, ladies. Are thank awesome. you. Bye. Okay. So you guys, you have been listening to some amazing poets that um I want you guys to cast your votes. Cast your votes. Um, whoever you select, they're gonna be their poem is gonna be featured inside Aspiring Authors magazine. And for you guys that are not familiar with the magazine, I am the founder of the magazine. I am Angela Thomas Smith. And the magazine um, June issue has been sent off. It is out. If you ordered a printed copy, um, it will be available soon. Um, if you would like to get a digital copy or a PDF copy, you can go. Um, you can click on the link that I posted earlier, and you can download a copy. Other than that, I want to thank you guys for taking time out to view um, this pop-up virtual um, author um, poet showcase. And we will be back on at three o'clock with our second group. So I'll see you guys at three and thank you.